Oh, Julian Alvarez, let me tell you that after the Copa America final, there will be new talks between Julian, his agents, and Manchester City. Hello, guys, here we are. I am here ready to update you on all the latest. We are here with uh, some news, with some stories. I will tell you something on many of the stories we have uh, in the recent days. I see some of you asking me about the announcement for Zirze. Don't worry, Manchester United fans. <music> Joshua already signed his contract as new Manchester United player yesterday. So Joshua Zirze is already and can be considered a new Manchester United player. So that deal for Zirze is done. It was an exclusive here we go a few days ago. Manchester United are now fully focused on the situation of Matthijs De Ligt as a top target. I see many questions on Combiners, but Combiners is for Juventus. Juventus will soon make their first proposal to Atalanta for Teon Combiners. I know we have many news on other clubs, but full focus on Juventus for Teon Combiners, who is very happy to stay in, uh, in Italy and to play for Juventus in case they can reach an agreement with Atalanta. Let me answer the first question I see in the power chat about Jared Brantwhite, because Manchester United fans keep asking me about this possibility. But guys, for Brandt White, it's important to say that after Everton almost reached an agreement today to sell Amadou Onana to Aston Villa, 50 million pounds, the two clubs are in contact today to close the deal. So it's really advanced and not done yet, but really advanced for Amadou Onana to Aston Villa. What's important to say is that after selling Onana for Everton, the financial situation is very good, is extremely good. And so selling Brandt White is something that could only happen if some crazy proposal will come to their table. They keep repeating that for a player like Brandt White, they want the same money that was invested for players like Fofana, for players like Josko Gvardiol to Manchester City one year ago. So at the moment, the position of Everton on Jared Brandt White is very clear. Uh, 45, 50 million pounds is absolutely not enough for Brandt White. And we know that Manchester United are not going to pay at the moment, that big fee. Killy asking about Liverpool. My friend, I told you for the academy about the signing of Rion Gumoha was an exclusive news. At the moment, for the first team, I still don't have any fresh update. As soon as I will have, I will let you know. Then, um, let me say, for Manchester United and defenders, we said about Brantwhite, but I wanted to clarify that even this weekend, today and tomorrow, Manchester United keep working on the deal for Matthijs De Ligt. The negotiation between May United and Bayer continue. Of course, in the last two, three days, May United have been busy with the documents and the formal steps for the deal for Joshua Zirze, but they are actively working on the deal for Matthijs De Ligt, so negotiations are ongoing. Olympic Marseille asking uh, my friend Remy about uh, news about Mason Greenwood and all the other uh, names. It's going to be a busy week for Olympic Marseille. They will have a contact with Inter for Valentin Carboni, so there will be a meeting between Inter and Olympique Marseille for Valentin Carboni. Meanwhile, Olympique Marseille have an agreement with Manchester United. We know that for Mason Greenwood, but still negotiating terms of the contract with Greenwood. So it's about the salary. It's about the details of the deal between Greenwood and Marseille. It's about the financials of the contract for Mason Greenwood. Do you have uh, news about Anderlecht not uh, on Orozco Cicchete from Chivas at the moment? No, my friend. I will ask for you and I will let you know. Calafiori. I see many Arsenal fans asking about Calafiori. But guys, on Calafiori, it's really important to clarify that uh, the negotiation is still ongoing between Bologna and Arsenal. Uh, and the point is how to pay that money. Because Bologna, for Calafiori, want 50 million euros sell on clause and guaranteed money, no add-ons, while Arsenal insist on paying with add-ons as part of the structure. Arsenal don't want to pay 50 million euros guaranteed immediately, but want to include uh, part of this deal in add-ons. So this is the negotiation between Arsenal and Bologna. They keep negotiating. I can guarantee that Riccardo Calafiori, who is currently on holiday, is waiting for Arsenal, wants to go to Arsenal, is obsessed with the idea of working for Arsenal, and so negotiations are ongoing 
on that story between the two clubs. On Nico Williams, I will tell you in a minute. On Xavi Simmons, I wanted to tell you uh, again, guys, I see many questions on Xavi Simmons and Manchester United. Let me say that the interest of Premier League clubs, May United, but not only, in Xavi Simmons is something real because they asked about the conditions of the deal uh, with Paris Saint-Germain, knowing that the player will leave Paris Saint-Germain this summer. So Manchester United interest is genuine, but is not something concrete or advanced at this stage because I'm told that the two clubs really pushing and still leading the race for Xavi Simons are Bayern and Red Bull Leipzig. So these two clubs have been pushing for weeks, let me say for months, April, uh, May, June, now July, for Xavi Simons. May United asked for the situation, but at the moment have still not presented any proposal, also because they know that Xavi Simons is already in advanced discussions with Red Bull Leipzig and with Bayern. So... Let's see if Manchester will decide to do something big in the next days. But at the moment, the interest is true. But the two clubs leading the race for Xavi Simons remain Bayern and Red Bull Leipzig, waiting for Xavi Simons to decide his future soon. On Xavi Simons, I wanted to say something else. Um, sorry, on Manchester United, I wanted to say something else on defenders. And this on Willy Camboala, because tomorrow Willy Camboala will fly to Spain and will undergo medical test as new Villarreal player from Manchester United. The deal is done. The here we go is confirmed. May United will receive 10 million euros and also included. Sell on close, buy back close. Why may United sell Willy Camboala? Because Willy didn't agree on new contract with United and he had one year left on his contract. So the only way was basically to sell the player to avoid the possibility of losing him on a free starting from January. So the agreement is done. The buyback clause is also there. And for May United, is considered a very good deal also for the player, obviously, to have the opportunity to develop in a new league and with the possibility to have uh, more minutes compared to what Manchester United were going to offer him for the new season, with Man United busy with Matthijs Delict and with Man United intention to sign two centre-backs. For Lenny Giroud, I see many of your questions, guys. I can tell you, for Lenny Giroud, that Manchester United did remains on the table. Manchester United are still waiting for Lenny Giroud to make his decision. As I told you here on play back in the recent days, Man United will not wait forever for Lenny Giroud. So it's not going to be something till the end of August or something like that. May United want Giroud. May United offered 50 million euros plus it owns up to 60 million euros. But May United want a decision as soon as possible. Otherwise, they will move on and go for different targets in that position. May United will be busy with centre backs in the summer transfer window. And Lenny Giroud is also important to say is still in direct communication with Real Madrid. So Real Madrid are absolutely there. As I told you, Real Madrid have been working on this deal for months. For May United, is everything basically new now, no? They have this ambitious project, new people in charge, new structure, but Real Madrid have the same people in charge already for a long time, and they've been working on this deal for Lenny Giroud since October, since November, since December. So it's now almost one year working on the mission Lenny Giroud at Real Madrid. So what they say at Real Madrid is very clear. They had new contacts with the player side this week. Real Madrid confirmed to Lenny Giroud that they want him. They want to sign him. They consider Lenny Giroud as one of the priorities for the summer. But Real Madrid have also told Lenny Giroud, if you want to come, you have to understand our strategy. We want you. We consider you a generational talent as a centre-back. But you need to wait for us. You need to wait for our timing. You need to wait for our strategy. This is the position of Real Madrid. It's very clear. It's something that Real Madrid do with all the players in the world. If you are Kylian Mbappé, if you are Lenin Giroud, if you are any other player, this is what Real Madrid do. They sign players at their timing on their conditions. So this is the point and this is the story with Lenny Giroud. So Real Madrid don't want to pay 60 million euros and don't include it. Real Madrid want Giroud, but has to be for less money this summer. Otherwise, they are prepared to wait till next summer on a free. Then is on Lenny Giroud. As I told you earlier this week, Giroud decides his future. If he wants to go to Man United, he has the possibility to do that now and to sign tomorrow morning. If he wants to wait for Real Madrid, he knows that Real Madrid will be there. Could be this summer, could be next summer. Depends on how much they can agree with Lille. But this is the situation with Lenny Giroud. And there are still no substantial changes to this story. Pascal Gross and Borussia Dortmund negotiations are advancing well. It's still not a done deal. But Pascal Gross now has very clear that is Brighton or Borussia Dortmund. No longer Eintracht. So these two clubs are 
in the race for Pascal Gross. Of course, for Brighton will be the opportunity to keep the player and extend this contract, but Borussia Dortmund are ahead. Borussia Dortmund are very confident. Borussia Dortmund want to get the deal done. The priority for Borussia Dortmund now is to clarify the situation of Serugi Rassi. Early next week, Borussia Dortmund will have new tests with uh, Serugi Rassi with the hope to complete the deal after the first part of medical uh, this uh, week. So Borussia Dortmund will focus on the story of Serugi Rassi and then they hope to complete also the deal for Pascal Gross. So this is the situation. Why so long for Maison Greenwood? I see the question of Olympic Marseille fans and also Italian fans because Maison Greenwood is also linked to Italian clubs. It's so long because Manchester United are prepared to give the green light. Uh, for Amazon Greenwood to leave. So they already accepted the proposal from Olympique Marseille. 30, 31 million euros, and also included, 50% sell-on close, a very big sell-on close. So everything is ready between clubs. But it's long because Amazon Greenwood wants to take his time to negotiate his contract. It's not about the project, because Roberto Rezervi, for example, at Marseille, is insisting on daily basis with Amazon Greenwood, calling the player, tempting the player. So it's not a problem of project or an issue with, uh, with anything. It's about the contract. So Mason Greenwood wants to agree the best contract possible for himself and for his studio. So it's, it's a negotiation. That's, that's the point. And that's the, that's the story. Um, then why you don't, you don't want Chelsea news? My, my friend, I'm giving you Chelsea news every day, I think. I gave you uh, the exclusive on Tosin. I gave you the exclusive on Renato Vega. I'm giving you a lot of news. It's not an update every day. So as soon as I will have something, I will let you know. On Chelsea, let me clarify again that they want a right-footed winger and they are considering the possibility to bring in one more striker. These are the two positions they want to cover now. So we will keep you posted. Then the leaked news we said about that. On this red way, I like this question. For this red way, we had reports on this red way already deciding to go to Bayern. But I can guarantee that at the moment this red way has not decided anything. Next week could be important, is not guaranteed yet, but could be important to have conversations with his agents and to decide where he wants to go. Bayern had a bid rejected from Ren, 35 million euros package, was reported by Le Parisien yesterday, and it's true. This bid was rejected, but Bayern want to be back with a new proposal for Desiree Douai. So this is the intention of Bayern. Paris Saint-Germain are also there. Paris Saint-Germain had some contacts on player side. Paris Saint-Germain had excellent relationship with people close to Desiree Douai. And so Paris Saint-Germain are expected to bid for Desiree Douai in the next days or weeks. At the moment, Tottenham, interest in this red way, yes, but bid, still not. So this is the situation. And Tottenham are not expected to be in concrete talks in the next days for this red way. Let's see if other Premier League clubs will decide to enter the race. At the moment, no, but remains an open situation because Due has not decided yet his future club. But keep an eye also on PSG because they're expected to bid. Fenerbahce, Mos Demir, still working on an Siri deal with Roma. Fenerbahce, many clubs showing interest. Federico Chiesa, to Roma. I said about Sule, Daniel, I said about Sule being one of the top targets for uh, Roma. Roma love Matias Sule, but there is also Leicester. So these two clubs are battling for Matias Sule. But remember that Juventus want important money, 40, 35 million euros, something around, around that. So Matias Sule could be a concrete topic for Federico Chiesa. We need to be patient and we need to wait uh, till he decides what he wants to do in terms of joining a new club. Because Juve want to sell Federico Chiesa, but at the moment there are still no advanced talks. So we need to be patient. On Juventus, let me say that they keep working on the deal for Jacques de Dibault. The player wants to go to Juventus, he's open to the move. Now Juventus have to understand about the budget. Because on Juventus we said about Dibault, we said about the situation of Jadon Sancho, another player they like. In a minute I will tell you about Jadon Sancho. But also on... Um, on Juventus, we know that their priority target is 10 cop miners from Atalanta. Juventus will bid for cop miners. So the first, first, first step is cop miners. Juventus first want to go to four cop miners and then to advance in negotiations for other topics. For Jadon Sancho, Juventus' appreciation is concrete. He's one of the players they have in the list. But for Jadon Sancho, the big change in the last 24 hours is that Jadon Sancho has changed his status at Manchester United. So yesterday morning, a meeting took place between Eric and Hag, and Jadon Sancho was a very positive and fair meeting between Sancho and Tenag. And now Jadon Sancho is working in Manchester United first squad. This is an important news because Jadon Sancho, since the end of September last year, was not working anymore with the first team of Manchester United. So Sancho and Eric Ten Hag were able to clarify the situation. Now depends on the player and on Man United. The first step is for Jadon Sancho to be part of the 
the squad, to train with the squad, to be available for pre-season friendlies, another important point. And then in the next weeks, we will see what Manchester United and Sancho decided to do, whether they want to sell the player in case they receive a proposal. But Juventus, to sign Sancho, need to sell at least one player. We know about Sule, we know about Federico Chiesa, but they need to sell an offensive player before sending an official bid for Sancho. So this is the situation. Or if other clubs want to join the race, for example, Borussia Dortmund love Jadon Sancho, but 40 million pounds, the price tag of the player, is considered way too high for Jadon Sancho at this point for Borussia Dortmund. So this is the situation. But again, remember that Sancho is now training with Man United and could have the possibility to stay at the club. So let's see what Man United and Sancho will decide in the next days and weeks together on this topic. Then the Jonathan Ty and Bayern, I think as soon as Matthijs De Ligt leaves Bayern to go to Man United, Bayern will go and try to close the deal with Bayern Leverkusen for Jonathan Ta. This is the plan. Bid for Jonathan Ta again. Jonathan Ta wants to go to Bayern, so this is the plan. This is the idea. Negotiation for Anselmino between Chelsea and Boca continue. I know many people told you guys that the deal was done, but there were still some small details to clarify, and they are just working on these details. So I still think that the deal for Anselmino to Chelsea will be done, but they still need to work on some small details. So it will be a here we go, but we need to be patient on the final, final uh, details. Lenny Giroud, we said about that, guys. So remember that if you are not looking at the live stream, you can have the possibility to check it uh, here on playback in the replays so you can find about Lenny Giroud and all the other things we have already mentioned. Then let me mention something on Nico Williams now. Because we said about uh, uh, Amadou Onana, uh, who is close to joining Gaston Villa. I think the here we go will come very soon for, uh, for Amadou Onana. But uh, Omudu Onana was one of the top targets for Barcelona as new midfielder. So especially Barcelona board, people in Barcelona board really, really appreciate Amadou Onana. Barcelona have been tracking, following in person, monitoring in a weekly basis with Everton, Amadou Onana. And he was considered one of the targets for the summer transfer window. But... Onana is going to Aston Villa, already the contract has been agreed, and Barcelona will not bid for Onana because their full focus, total focus in this moment in terms of budget, obviously, they are different players, so I'm not comparing the two players, but I'm comparing the budget, and Barcelona full focus is on Nico Wade. Barcelona, after the Euros, now full respect for Nico Williams, full respect for Spain, time to think about the Euros final against England. But starting from next week, Barcelona want to go very strong on a deal for Nico Williams. They already had contacts on player side, positive. They already had contact with his agents, obviously. They know every single detail of the conditions for the release clause. 58 million euros plus taxes. Then there is the salary, the commission. So there is plenty of work to do. But Barcelona internally, with the approval of the manager, Ansi Flick, who already said yes to Nico Williams. So they are altogether convinced to try for Nico Williams. Then we know the financial situation of Barca. So the president, Juan Laporta, said very clearly in public that they want, um, they can do the deal for Nico Williams. He said, we can afford Nico Williams. And this is the president of Barcelona, it's not me. So he said that in public. Now, Barca know that the crucial part is on player side. So after the Euros, Barcelona will start the conversations, starting from next week to enter into advanced stages of the conversation to sign Nico Williams. Why Barca are pushing so much? Barca are not going to bid for Onana or for any other player because they believe that timing in the Nico Williams deal will be crucial. If Nico will be still at Athletic, for example, at the beginning of August, the first or second week, is going to be almost really complicated, almost impossible to sign Nico in the final days of the transfer window. We know how tough it is to discuss this kind of topics with Athletic. So Barca know that they have to make it happen as soon as possible. And Barca know that Premier League clubs are still there because Chelsea still appreciate Nico Williams, but they don't want to pay uh, crazy money in terms of salary, commission, and obviously the release clause in one solution. So this is one topic. Arsenal still appreciate Nico Williams, but they also don't want to pay in that kind of structure. They wanted something different in, in terms of money. But the appreciation of Arsenal, and especially of Nicola Arteta for Nico Williams, is real. 
Liverpool also like the player, but Liverpool never started any concrete contact to advance so far. But Barca believe that maybe after the Euros, the English clubs could return on Nico Williams. And so Barcelona will try to be fast. For the financial fair play, Barca still need, obviously, the approval of La Liga to make the Nico Williams deal happen. So financial fair play and La Liga are two crucial factors in this story for Nico Williams. But Barca want to save their money, to save their budget and to attack the Nico Williams deal in the next days after the Euros because they see Nico as their top target this summer. And they are all together on this. Deco, Ansi Flick, Juan Laporta, all the people at the club. So let's see if Barca will be able to make it happen, but they will pass to action in the next days with Nico as top target because they know that Premier League clubs could appear on the scene really soon. Chelsea asking, will Napoli lower the price for Ozyman? At the moment, it's not about lowering the price. It's about starting a negotiation. At the moment, there is still no concrete negotiation for, uh, for Victor Ozyman. So let's wait and see on that one. I see many Milan fans, but guys, uh, for Alvaro Morata, full respect for uh, Spain because they have a Euros final tomorrow. I can only tell you once again that the Milan are very confident on Alvaro Morata, but waiting for the Euros final. After the Euros final, any moment could be good for Milan to close the deal for Alvaro Morata. This is the situation. Then, any news on Ferdi, Canoglu, Ferdi Cadioglu from Fenerbahce? I can tell you that, for example, Borussia Dortmund appreciated him, but they believe it's too expensive because Fenerbahce now wants something around at least 30 million euros. Brighton have an interest, but I feel the story for Cadioglu is still open. It's not easy to sign the player for Fenerbahce because he's a really important player for Fenerbahce. He's a crucial player for Fenerbahce. Loris, Pavlovic and Milan, agreement with the player, negotiations ongoing with Salzburg. Really similar to what happens with Fofana, also in this case, agreement with the player and working <coughs> with uh, Monaco to reach an agreement on the fee. What happened to Guido Rodriguez to Barca? The deal collapsed for Guido Rodriguez because uh, Xavi left the club and it was a signing wanted by Xavi. Is Inacio the replacement for Brantwet to United? My friend, as soon as I will know who is the player they want to sign, I will let you know. Now, focus is on Matthijs Delict. Desiree Due, I keep seeing many questions, guys. I already mentioned that. But Desiree Due, in the next days, will decide which club, which project is considered the best one for him. So Desiree Due will take his time and make a decision. Then, on Desiree Due, let me say that the two clubs pushing are Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern. Bayern already with a bid rejected, and PSG with strong interest and contact made with the agents of the player. At the moment, still no bid from Premier League, but again, the player has not decided yet. So the situation remains open also to other clubs. Now, PSG and Bayern leading, but the situation could be open also to Premier League clubs. PSG or Nico Williams? My friend, at the moment, I'm not aware of anything concrete, but let me say that would make a lot of sense. So uh, I think it would be the perfect solution for Paris Saint-Germain. But PSG are currently working on other solutions. But, you know, when a player, a top player like Nico Williams has a release clause, anything can happen in a very fast way. I don't say that just for PSG, but, for example, look at Olise. Olise was in advance at talks with Chelsea, but Bayern, behind the scenes, were able in almost 24 hours to agree a deal with Olise, offer a very big salary, a very important project, and then to pay the clause quickly with Crystal Palace. So when the player has a release close, things can happen very fast. And this is what happened, for example, with Olise. And this is why we have to be careful with Nico Williams till the end. Barcelona are now fully focused on him. Barca will go strong. Premier League clubs are still interested. But when you have this kind of release close, you have to be attentive till the end. Which news on Spurs? The appreciation of Spurs, my friend Fergus Gibson, on for, um, sorry, uh, Eze from Crystal Palace. And also... Um, with all the other uh, all the other options we always mentioned here like Pedro Neto is absolutely confirmed so Tottenham like Eze and Tottenham like Pedro Neto they have to decide how much they want to spend in that position so there is internal conversation but they will bring in one more player in that position for sure one more offensive player oh once they asking about Everton and Lindstrom they have interest in Lindstrom from Napoli I think they will bid for Lindstrom in the next days let's see if they can agree a deal with Napoli. For Matis Tell, guys, at the moment I see many questions, but I don't have any concrete update to give you. So at the moment he's, he's very quiet and he's an important player for, um, 
is an important player for um, Bayern, of course, who tried to hijack the deal for Estevao. I will let you know in the next weeks. I can't talk now. Uh, many questions on Ugarte, but let me say that for Ugarte, it could be really important to see what happens also with um, Casemiro, because there is strong interest in Casemiro from Saudi. Ali Tihad have Casemiro on their list, and I still believe that Casemiro to Saudi is possible. Then, United forever. Will something happen in May United midfield? Yes, I think in general Manchester United want to do something in the midfield. I said about Casemiro, but Ugarte remains one of the names they have in the shortlist for the midfield. Absolutely, yes. Then, Jurgen Klopp legend. Mark Gehill linked with Liverpool. I can tell you, my friend, that Liverpool has been scouting the player for a long time. He's a player they like, for sure. But at the moment, I can tell you that Liverpool are negotiating for Mark Gehill, because at the moment, the situation is quiet around him obviously with the euros so after the euros we will see the appreciation of liverpool for the player i can confirm to you but not only liverpool also other clubs for example arsenal and many others appreciate the player but in terms of bid in terms of negotiation is a different story anything on crescencio summerville not yet my friend uh, we know brighton had a strong interest but let's see if other clubs will enter the race Guys, many questions on Hermoso. I, I see many questions on Hermoso, but I will, I will tell you on Hermoso as soon as I will know the club. At the moment, nothing is clear for Hermoso club. He's taking this time to pick the best option as free agent. As soon as I will know the club, I will let you know. Then, 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 let me see. Uh, Andre to Fulham is a possibility. The interest of Fulham in Andre is concrete, is true, is a player that they had in the list for more than one year and he remains high on their list for sure. This is concrete, this is serious. Can you tell us which team is more possible to get Xavi Simons? My friend, I see your nickname mad about Bayern, but I, I will explain to you one thing. The clubs are presenting their projects. I told you that two clubs are leading the race now, Leipzig and Bayern. But then to know which club has more possibilities, you have to be in the brain of Xavi Simons. And I can guarantee you to you that Xavi has not decided yet. Xavi is taking his time. Xavi will decide in the next days, but Xavi is considering many factors before saying yes to a club or another. This is why there is also interest from England. We said about my United interest, it's true, it's genuine. But the two clubs leading the race are Leipzig and Bayern because they've been working on this deal for a long, long time. Then, Andrea, I see Cop Miners and Juve. I told you already many times, guys, Juve will bid for Cop Miners. Juve want Cop Miners, and Cop Miners has an agreement with Juventus. So I think there are very good chances for this deal, but still waiting for the negotiation between Juventus and Atalanta. John Evans remains a name on PSG list. And let me explain to you one thing on PSG. PSG like Joshua Kimmich, PSG like Joao Neves, but PSG don't consider Joao Neves and Kimmich alternative. PSG believe that they are two different players and they could play together. The problem is financial because Benfica still want 120 million euros for Joao Neves. The rail is closed. And we know how complicated it is to pay that money for any club. So PSG consider Joao Neves as one of their top targets for this summer. They love Joao Neves and they know that the player will be keen on the move. Now it depends on club side because Benfica are insisting on 120 million euros. But PSG interest in Joe Neves is genuine and PSG interest in Joshua Kimmich is also genuine. And Joshua Kimmich is also in the list of Premier League clubs. So I think there will be movement for Joshua Kimmich in the next weeks. Do you think Zir's announcement will be after or before the final? Guys, on announcements, it depends on the club. You have to ask the club, not to me. I told you that he signed. I told you, here we go. I told you everything on this deal. Now... Uh, the announcement is not up to me. It's up to the club, it's up to the documents and all this kind of technical stuff. But Zirz is a May United player, don't worry. Mitro Fulham, the interest is true, but at the moment they don't have any done deal yet with, uh, with uh, Arsenal, so it's just about interest at this point. David Anchko for Atletico Madrid remains a top target, for sure, I can guarantee that. Lenny Giroud, I already mentioned that memo here in the chat. You can find the replay for the live stream in some minutes as soon as we finish. Will Barca get a central midfielder? They want to sign a central midfielder. For example, they like many players. We say it about Onana, but Onana is going to Aston Villa. And trust me, now Barca only wants to focus on Nico Williams. Barca want to go for Nico Williams and want to go strong for Nico Williams. So that's the plan. That's the idea. On Julian Alvarez, and I think it's a perfect topic to mention to, to close our live stream, on Julian Alvarez, let me tell you that after the Copa America final, there will be new talks between Julian 
his agents and Manchester City to discuss about the future. We know that Julian wants to play more. We know there is interest from PSG and also other clubs are interested in Julian Alvarez. So after the Copa America final, there will be new talks to discuss the future of Julian Alvarez. Man City, till today, never wanted to give a price tag, never wanted to negotiate because they want to keep Julian Alvarez at the club and maybe discuss his contract situation. So City believe that Julian Alvarez has to stay at the club. But let's see how this new round of talks will go with his agents. And see you in the next days. Many news. The market is entering into crucial stages. So see you soon. Thanks for your questions and see you soon.